a lot of wellness and health influencers really project this image of perfection. Let's be realistic. Let's keep it a buck, okay? Welcome back to my channel. I am Glenn Preezy. If you are new here, hey girl, hey. And to my returning subbies. Wow, I don't even have enough words to express how grateful and how blessed I feel that you guys continue to come back for new content and for how vulnerable you all are in the comments and sharing your stories with me, your tips, your advice, what's working for you on your journey. I am beyond grateful to have you guys and thank you so much for returning. As you can see by the intro, the thumbnail and the title, you already know what we're gonna be talking about today. We are going to be getting into finding balance on this hormone and fibroid health journey. I get a lot of questions about how I go out to eat. Do I go out to eat? What do I eat if I go out to eat? How do I travel? How do I manage? Basically, how am I finding balance on this journey? So if you want to know more about this topic, you already know what to do. Keep watching. Okay girls, so thank you again for joining me on another video. If you are new here, first things first, have you subscribed? <laughs> I talk a lot about hormone health and how I have shrank and manage my fibroids. So I may have some very important information for you guys and I would hate for you to miss a video. Go ahead and subscribe, okay? Make sure you get down there and turn on your post notifications, okay? I am noticing that a lot of my returning subscribers are missing my new uploads because you don't have your post notifications turned on. Let's get into some quick announcements. Of course, I'm going to mention that I have a new website, hotgirlhealthjourney.com. I am slowly building on the website. I have just recently added some more resources for heavy bleeding. The articles that I talked about in that video are over there and the products that I use are also over there on hotgirlhealthjourney.com. If you are interested in what I eat in a week, I have a five day meal plan available for you guys. Use code GLAMPREZY to get a discount on that. Go over to hotgirlhealthjourney.com, it's there. I also also have a free one day meal plan for you guys completely free it's not gonna ask anything of you it is breakfast lunch snack and dinner if you have watched my last video what I eat in a day and you saw me cook that delicious herb baked chicken that recipe is over there in the one day free download so there's that I did quickly want to mention the fact that we are almost at 20,000 subscribers oh my god you guys I never never imagined that this platform would grow to be this big. I really did not. If you are new here and you have not watched all of my videos, I'm going to invite you to take a look at my fibroids playlist. A lot of you ask me questions about things that I've already covered in videos from the past. So please, please go over and take a look at my fibroid playlist. It's gonna be linked right up here for you. As the Hot Girl Health family is expanding, I am finding that I have new goals, new ideas about how to really get more in depth with you guys. With that being said, I'm also noticing a lot more noise. Got a lot of trolls on here. I have a lot of people talking. Believe it or not, I have a lot of negative comments and things. And some people are just really not here for the healing and really for the journey. And that's okay. I'm always going to put out these free videos for you all on YouTube and share my journey with you all here on YouTube. What I would like to do at 20K though is add a subscription for my dedicated hot girl health girlies who are really looking for less edited content, okay? Like more vlogs, shop with me, just day in the life and those types of things. And also those girlies who want to get into deeper conversations that I'm comfortable having here on this platform. It is inevitable with any platform on social media, you're going to have a bunch of random people. <laughs> it comes with the territory, but I'm thinking that if I'm being transparent with you, putting that behind a small paywall will filter out those people, okay? And I think that that is very important for me to kind of filter out those people whose energy is not in alignment with mine, more so for me to get a little bit more vulnerable with you all and really sharing my life with you guys. As much as I love these conversations, I think that it's time to go a little deeper and to get more personal. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know down in the comments. But without further ado, <laughs> come on in, because we got some things to talk about, girl. Okay, so before we start, you already know. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm um, drinking GT Synergy. Mm -hmm. Joanne. Today I have the lemon berry flavor. I've had this before. Delicious. Whoa. Okay, so how have y'all been? Have y'all been good? Y'all been good? The, the eclipse was eclipsing child, the, the retrograde, retrograding, ret mercury and microgrades and things. The energy is a little intense out there, okay? Yeah, and I've been exhausted, exhausted. Like, ooh. Anyway, let's get into this topic. You know I've got my notes. So finding balance on my fibroid journey. First things first, let's talk about it. If you have gone over and you have followed me on Instagram, you have seen no doubt that my personal Instagram page has nothing to do with fibroids. Not at all, okay? You're gonna see me living my life. You're gonna see me dressing up in my fashion. You're gonna see me doing beauty and things of that nature, traveling, oh my God. And really just living my life. But it's not all about fibroids. It's about the things that I really love, which happen to be fashion and travel and things of that nature, okay? And I mentioned that because some of you who have gone over and followed me at Glam Preezy on Instagram, if you wanna follow me, you can. If you don't, like I said, it's not about fibroids. So do what you will with that. But I find that some of my girlies, I love you. Um, and thank you so much for supporting me on both platforms. Um, but you asked me like, I see you going out, I see you traveling. How are you finding balance here? Obviously we're gonna address that in this video. But I wanted to bring that up because if you get nothing from me today out of this video, I want you to understand that I refused to allow this condition to define me. I refused to be held back in life by this condition, which is the reason why I went on this health journey and why I went so hard finding information and, and digging in deep to really figure out how to help my body be at its best. And if you know me, I am not the type of person that is going to just lay down and take something. I am going to fight until my last breath to live this beautiful life that God gave me. We got one life, you guys, one. I don't even wanna say unfortunately because I'm past that point of thinking. This is the situation that God has given to me and I am making it my mission to still be able to get out there and live my life unapologetically. I will not be held back by this. In the beginning of my journey, it was really hard for me to even fathom that I would ever have this thought process. So I'm saying all that to say that I will not let this situation and my circumstances turn me into a victim. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just not gonna do it. And besides that, as a person, I'm not really a homebody. I love being at home. I'm very productive at home and I flourish with my work and all of the studying that I do at home, but I like to be out touching, seeing, tasting, experiencing life. So I have made a mission of getting out and doing things that make me feel normal. You know what I mean? and make me feel like I am getting the best out of life that I can. So that means, you know, yes, I'm still traveling. Yes, I'm still dressing up and thank God I have been able to shrink these fibroids and I can fit into my clothes and people are not asking me if, I, if I'm pregnant and I'm not bloated and I'm not miserable. You know what I mean? That is the beauty of this journey and it's all so full circle and so cyclical that I remember in the beginning of this just being so miserable and so upset at life and I've come so far from that and I'm so 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 grateful that I can sit here and talk to you from this perspective because it's worth fighting for. Let me take a sip on that point. I feel like, look I'm trying to wash my mouth, I feel like a lot of wellness and health influencers and gurus really project this image of perfection this ideal that like there has to be perfection or else you're not able to achieve this goal of wellness and hormone balance and, and in my case shrinking and managing my fibroids and I, re I really hate that i'm not an anti-influencer by any means because i do have to recognize that at some point, yes, I still am an influencer to a degree, but I am a fibroid girly. I am you. I just found the light. I just found a path. I just found a way that worked for me. I don't feel like I'm an influencer. Do I understand that I do influence? Absolutely. But what I feel like the difference between me and a lot of the other girlies are that, again, like I said, that there's this image and this projection of 
<laughs> this is Bronx. This is one of my dogs, y'all. And he is just, he's looking for my attention so bad, child. Like I said, there's this projection of perfection and it's not real. It's not attainable. You're gonna make a mistake. You're gonna slip up. You are gonna fall off the bandwagon. It's normal. It's life. There's no way. There is no way that you're gonna tell me you are 1000% within this lifestyle all the time. So I just want you guys to understand that while yes, it is extremely important and I'm gonna talk about these things later in this video. It is extremely important to find your routine and find the foods that work for you. Find a diet that works for you. And I don't mean diet as in you're losing weight, but I mean a lifestyle diet. Find the lifestyle changes that you need to, to find. You know, the people, places, and things that I talk about. Boundaries, all of those things. It is extremely important to establish that, especially in the beginning of your journey. It's also equally as important to live your life and to do the things that make your heart happy. Please hear me. Because when you're miserable on this diet or trying to stick to this journey like it's a trend or like it's just here for the moment, you are inevitably going to fail. If you adopt this journey as a lifestyle change and you make changes that are sustainable, it's easier for you to flow with it. It's not so rigid. It's not so outside of you because the changes that you made hopefully are organic to you and your needs. So speaking a little bit more about balance and routine and things like that, when I first went on this journey, I knew that it was very important for me to find things that were going to be sustainable for me, like I said. I am actually the type of person that can stick to a very rigid regime when it comes to eating. But lifestyle-wise, that's not gonna work. It would not work. Because again, like I said, I like to go out. I'm going out. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put that on and I'm going out. While yes, I have absolutely had to make adjustments to my life, I can still enjoy it, you know what I mean? So when I decided what diet type that I thought was going to be good for me, a lot of people had a lot of suggestions. A lot of books suggested alkaline diet and um, a whole bunch of different things that were wonderful. However, I felt were temporary. I didn't want that. I wanted to find something that I could foresee me doing forever. And that's why I adopted the paleo diet. Not only because my body really loves and responds very well to that type of eating, but also because it's livable. It's actually realistic, you know what I mean? So that was very important for me. I know in the beginning of your journey, sometimes it can be hard to imagine these drastic changes from maybe what you're doing now to what you need to be doing, but small steps in the direction of your goal still makes progress. I just wanna remind you of that. You don't have to wake up one day and be like, I want a new life. Some people like me <laughs> do things like that and they're successful at it, but most people need slow change. That's okay. Even if you change up things 50% of what you were doing, 25%, 15%, that's still more than zero when you are going on this fibroid journey and you are redefining your boundaries and redefining your, your nutrition and redefining your fitness and things of that nature. It's very important to, yes, do things that are going to uphold your ultimate goal because we're not gonna play. We gonna shrink these fibroids, we gonna be okay. So we need to make sure that we're prioritizing that. However, make it something that is not so far from you as an individual. You know, maybe you're not a Pilates girl. Maybe you're the type of girl that likes walks. Go on your walks. Don't let nobody tell you walking is not good. Walking is perfect. It's fine. Do that. If you're not a weights girl, maybe you're a Pilates girl. They're both strength, they're both strength training, okay? But just find something that suits you. Yes, during the process, you might try a whole bunch of stuff that is like, okay, this is not gonna work for me. And yes, you do have to be committed and you do have to give things time. However, if it is so far out of your element that you can't even fathom doing it, start slowly. And then once you've reached your goal of, I don't know, walking consistently over a uh, 60, 90 days, then you can say, you know what? Now I'm gonna get my gym membership. And then I'm gonna get on the treadmill and walk on incline 12 on speed 3.5 for 30 minutes. You know, <laughs> let's talk about routine. Oh, essential, essential. If there is one thing that I can say is absolutely a must here is creating a routine. From the moment that you open your eyes 
in the morning. Have things in place that you do every day. It will help you in so many different ways. It's gonna help you be consistent. It's gonna help you not miss steps. It's gonna help you to create new healthy habits, okay? It's good for your nervous system. It's good for your soul to wake up and have your self-care. And again, as I said in another video, I'm not talking about masking and going to spas. I'm talking about preparing your breakfast. I'm talking about praying in the morning, meditating in the morning, getting to the gym or going for a walk. Even in your actual grooming and self-care routine, taking moments to love on yourself and massage your face and love yourself when you're in the shower you know, just incorporating these things before you even step out of your house so that when you do, your equilibrium is good and your energy is balanced and grounded and you're ready for your day. This is especially important when you travel. Routine is so important because when you have a routine at home and you go on vacation or say you travel for work, your environment is unfamiliar, but your routine is not. You're still going to rise in the morning and do your same routine. I think that that is one of the major hacks to staying on your health journey, especially if you travel a lot. It just helps you have that familiarity and stay on track when you are not home. Especially some of my girlies are dating new guys. You know, in the beginning stages, y'all staying at each other's house, you over his house. Still, wake up and have your routine. And guys like it. They see that and they be like, all right, she be on her stuff. This is what she does. They'll get used to it. And maybe they'll start to incorporate some of your healthy habits, who knows? But it's very important that you don't fall off track because you've changed your physical position. All right, going out to eat. <laughs> By far my favorite topic, plan ahead, okay? It's 2024, girlies. And what I mean by that is look for restaurants and places to patronize and give your money to that care about sustainability, that care about the food that they're serving. Farm to Table is one example that I love, love, love. I was recently in Vegas. Even in Vegas, we're able to find a farm to table restaurant that had amazing food and the service was amazing and the quality of the food was amazing. You open the menu and it actually talks about the ranches that the food came from and restaurants that do seasonal menus so that they are serving things with the natural flow of what is being grown at farms. Oh my God, that's one way. And I love to give my money to businesses like that because those are the businesses that we need to see more of. Outside of that, okay, so I'm paleo right? I feel like I could pretty much eat anywhere. Every, every place is going to have meat, fish, and some greens. <laughs> every place is going to have that. If you are vegan, it may be a different story. It is 2024 though. So again, planning ahead has to be a priority for you. Otherwise you're just doomed to fail or don't eat there. You know, it is what it is. So for me, people say, oh my God, what if it's not organic? And that takes me to my next point. If I'm not preparing the food, I have to release this idea that I have any control over what is going into this meal. It's impossible, it's impossible. So it's okay for me to say, all right, I'm gonna go to this place and maybe they don't have organic chicken. I don't really eat chicken that's not organic, so don't order no chicken. You know what I mean? Get a salad. Um, tell them don't bring you no dressing, just bring you olive oil and balsamic. It's ways to do it. I've also requested that my food be cooked with olive oil and not butter. Are they putting butter in anything else? I have no idea, but I can request it. You can control the controllables, but you have to take accountability in that you know you're going out. There's no real way for you to control everything that you're eating if you're not preparing it. Okay, so I did wanna mention that if you are going to go out and you choose to indulge in something that you know is not good for you. Please use moderation, moderation. Do not consume nearly as much as you would normally. So if you're gonna go out and eat something that is like dairy, you wanna go have yourself some nachos or a burger or a cheeseburger or something you know that is not healthy for you, a cocktail, cocktails. Try to strip it down a little bit. Okay, so, you know, eliminate some of the elements there, like maybe not have cheese, you know, something like that. But if you are going to indulge in it, eat half of it, or like I do with my friends, 
tell your man or your friend to order the burger and just eat a couple bites. Have them cut you a small little portion. Have a tiny portion instead of the entire thing. If you're gonna drink, first of all, try mocktails. Mocktails is mocktails has been vibing, honestly. These mocktails that they're making lately are really yummy. Try a mocktail or two. But if you're going to drink, cut it in half, at least, at least in half. If not in in thirds, <laughs> and do much, much less than you would normally do okay i know that's making sense to y'all i know you i know you picking up what i'm putting down okay you hear me so if you are gonna go out and it's not a place where you're gonna order a salad or something healthy because sometimes life be life -ing, okay and we find ourselves in predicaments that either you say what the hell or you know you just have to choose sometimes in life we work in spaces in areas that are not healthy you know there are situations so i'm not gonna act like i don't know this exists but like i said choose the lesser of two evils or or exercise big moderation we're not gonna pretend like these situations do not happen and that's one of the things with a lot of influencers that I don't like let's be realistic let's keep it a buck okay it happens try to cut down on these amounts of occurrences you know if you have been doing well all month and you go out once and kind of ruin it a little bit try to exercise moderation less damage done okay in the beginning of your journey as I've said before earlier in this video, if you've watched any of my other videos, you have already seen and you know that in the beginning of this journey, I spent a ton of time isolated and at home. I suggest you do that. If you are just now starting on your health journey and you still haven't gotten your bearings, stay at home. It's not gonna kill you. It's two, three weeks, maybe four. I don't know, four might kill me. <laughs> and I don't mean just stay locked up in your house. I mean, don't go out to eat and all that stuff. Prepare all your meals at home so that you can get an idea of what it is that you want to be eating, how your body is responding to these foods. So important to take that initial time to devote to figuring out what your journey is gonna look like. What do you need to be eating? What does your body like? What does your body hate? What are your fibroids seeming to respond to? And what is making you feel good? You have to figure these things out. Don't think that you can just jump in here and start your journey and then go out for cocktails with your girlfriend. No girl, that's not, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. That's not realistic. People ask me, how long before you were able to see results initially? 90 days of consistency, 90 days of me really buckling down and figuring out what it is that I need to do going forward. That was my trial and error period, which till this day, I'm still trial and erroring. <laughs> Finding, trying different foods and different diets, observing my body and how I'm feeling when I'm eating, when I'm doing this, when I'm talking to that person, when I'm engaging in these activities and really being quiet. You know, you need that initial period. Once you get out of that and you already know what you wanna eat, what you like to eat, what you need to do, what time you need to be in bed, how many hours of sleep you need, those types of things, it's easier for you to go out into life and do your normal activities. However, I will say, for me, even now, and I started this journey, I wanna say that most of you all have seen my first video. I filmed that video almost a year and a half ago, okay? A lot of the videos that you all are watching are old. A lot has changed since those, those initial videos, but I'm saying that to say that. Five days a week, I'm eating in-house. Even if my girlfriends be like, oh, I wanna meet you, I wanna do this, and my girlfriends don't do that anymore because now I live in a different state, but I wanna go do this and I wanna go do that. I'ma eat at home, I'ma eat dinner first, and I'll go meet you out if it's during the week, okay? For the most part, I'm in the house, Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, okay? And if I go out Friday, Sunday through Thursday, okay? It's a two days, give myself two days, unless I'm on vacation. That keeps me in balance. It keeps me from slipping up throughout the week. I know that I, I can go grocery shopping on my Sunday or my Monday and find myself for the week, figure out what I'm gonna eat. And I'm cooking all week. I'm not going out. I'm trying not to order out. Sometimes things happen, especially when you get on your period and you just, you know, that's why I say plan ahead. <laughs> that's a whole nother video. Even on your period, even when you get in those moments where you're just like, oh, you can't be bothered to cook, make sure you do meal prep. Cause sometimes even though your period may not be horrible, we just don't be feeling like it. And we're all, we, we deserve to have that week to just reset, okay? So make sure you have things in your refrigerator that don't need to be cooked or do your cooking beforehand. Make sure you have things you can grab and eat, fruits, yogurt, healthy snacks and things of that nature, um, protein for your protein shakes and things that are easier for you to prepare 
that's also a really good tip that's that's a big hack always make sure you have something you can just eat you just eat it a apple a orange a banana some strawberries some berries hummus carrots uh what's the other one called celery you know i always have things to make a salad sometimes i just cannot be bothered and then i make a tuna salad mm, delicious there are so many ways but try to plan ahead so i want to get too far into that but that's another thing that that has re really kept me on track so just to recap five days a week <laughs> friday saturday hit i'm in these streets i'm going to find out uh, a new restaurant i'm going to see a new exhibit i'm going to the rodeo a fair a new farmer's market whatever is going on out in the world but during the week i'm in the house love you call me on the weekend okay gotta get back mondays we're back to business okay okay so we are almost done look at my notes child i just want to give you all a dose of reality and let you know that it is not easy no by no means i'm just used to it like i say in many of my videos it's getting up every single day and choosing to reach for the better things the better mental thoughts the better food the better people places and things every single day of our lives as long as we're alive we're living a journey right and it's our choice we have free will so you have to actively participate in your healing every day if you want to reap the benefits you can't just think you're going to half-ass your health journey that's not a thing and i understand that social media and again to that point that i said some of these these influencers make it look so easy it's not easy but it should come without a second thought because you should be that committed to it because you don't want to feel the pain and the anguish and the all the things that you just came from i'm never going back i'm never going back i don't care if i have to get up and take these supplements every day i don't care if i have to go and be discerning when i'm grocery shopping and i gotta go to three four different grocery stores. i don't care uh, because i got the time for my health and if i don't have it i'm gonna make it you have to prioritize your journey but i accept that this is the path that i chose and i accept that this is what comes with this journey because it's worth it and if we're being realistic, which, you know, I'm your sister, I'm your girl, I'm always going to be transparent with you. Sometimes you just have to choose the lesser of two evils. You know what I mean? Especially if you're, if you're choosing to go out and participate in the world and dine or travel or whatever it is that you're doing, you have to accept that part of that experience is you not having control and you're choosing that. So as long as you stay 100 with yourself, you'll be all right. Before we close this out, give yourself grace. This is a hard road. This is a hard road that we have, okay? Rewarding, but it is difficult. So if you slip up, don't be so hard on yourself. The best thing you can do is get back on track. Don't spend time dwelling on how you made a mistake this weekend or you did this that and the other just get back on track come monday mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it's that easy now i will say that there are a lot more in-depth tips and things that i've learned on this journey for when you do slip up like say you had a couple cocktails with your girlfriend and you knew you wasn't supposed to do that but hey life is life what do you do how do you fix that you know what i mean and those types of things. You slipped up, you ate the wrong thing, you was eating bad all weekend, you got depressed, your boyfriend and broke up with you and here you are in a slump and you messed up. How do you fix that? I have those tips. And those are tips that I think that I'm going to put on my subscription once we hit 20K. We are at 19 and a half thousand subscribers. That is insane to me. I really want to get realer than real with y'all. I've always been real with y'all, but I want to get deeper. I want to go deeper. And I find that my girlies who are really here for me and really here for this journey, 
those are the ones that are going to want to look forward to my new uh, subscription. I know some of the girls go on Patreon. I'm not gonna do that. It's already complicated enough. There's too many apps and all the things. I would like to keep everything here on YouTube. So look forward to that at 20K. Oh my God, I am probably gonna do a giveaway. I just really want to say thank you guys so much for your support. I love y'all. I love y'all. I, oh, I never feel alone because I have you guys. I, I've moved away from my hometown, which you guys know if you've watched some of my most recent videos and my friends are not here, boo hoo, but I got y'all though. <laughs> that being said, thank you guys so much for sticking in there with me and watching another video. I am beyond blessed. I am just, when I see my channel growing like this and seeing you all's comments, getting to know you guys through YouTube is like, the highlight of this journey. Again, I would like to invite you to go and head over to hotgirlhealthjourney.com, my new website. We just sent out the second issue of our monthly newsletter. So subscribe to hotgirlhealthjourney.com if you want to get the monthly newsletter. And also if you wanna be notified every time we add some major updates to the website, please check out the free one day meal plan. And if you are looking for some yummy inspiration and meals to try on your fibroid and hormone health journey, please do purchase the five day meal plan. Use code GLAMPREZY for a 15% discount. Again, we have some yummy options on there. I've got fish, I've got meat, I've got veg, but overall it is still a paleo type diet. So if you are down with that, then you'll be okay over there. So make sure that you subscribe, you thumbs up this video and you comment down below. I love to read you guys' comments. If you have not watched the rest of my fibroid videos, here's the fibroid playlist and a video for you to watch. Go on over. Hell the next one. Mwah. I love you guys. Stay well, be safe, see you in another video.